So what is a composite material? Well, a composite material is essentially a man-made or natural material made from two or more components. Now it's important to remember that these components can either be man-made or natural. A lot of people just assume that we're talking about a man-made material. Now, the need for composite materials comes about from the marine sector and the aviation sector as well, where typical materials such as steel normally crack and fail under pressure. Now, if we take a look at a common example of a composite material that we use in the marine industry, uh, which is fiberglass. Now, fiberglass is made from two components. It's made from glass fibres and it's also made from, more often than not, a polyester resin, which is the matrix. Now, these glass fibres are classed as the reinforcement, and the reinforcement is essentially what gives this composite material the strength properties that we need over steel or traditional materials. Now, the resin is known as the matrix, and the matrix essentially is a material that gives that composite material its shape. So we can create really complex shapes um, much easier than we can with stereotypical uh, materials such as steel or aluminium. Now this matrix also um, transfers all of the load to all of the individual fibres of glass as well. Now it's important to remember that composites are not just man-made uh, materials. Okay? Now whenever we talk about composites, people assume that we're talking about a material that's suited for the marine industry, aviation, aerospace, or for specialist situations like pipes and fixtures. It's not. Composites derived from a natural setting would. And although you wouldn't think it, wood itself is a composite material. It's made from wooden fibres and it's also held together by its own matrix called lignin. So why doesn't fibreglass matting on its own work? So remember that composite materials are made from two or more components, resin and fibreglass strands, or a reinforcement of some kind. It's also important to remember that we don't just use fibreglass strands. We can use aramid or carbon fibre or even boron as well. Now, with these materials, if they're produced in a form like a sheet, a sheet of glass, we all know that glass shatters really easily. Now, we produce all of this matting in fibre form so that although it will break fairly easily, only a small amount of fibres will be affected when that shattering happens. And the resin is then used to transfer that load over the whole of the material. Now, if we look at fiberglass as an example, we have lots of different types of mats. We have woven roving, we have chop strand mat, we have tapes, we have lots of different kinds depending on the application that we want. Essentially, if we just use a fiberglass mat, there is nothing holding it together and there's nothing that's going to transfer that load. So we can easily rip it. So why can't we just use resin on its own? We've talked about using fiberglass on its own and why we can't. But why can't we just use resin? After all, in the long run, it would save us a lot of money on materials and make composite parts much cheaper as well to produce. Well, the main thing is that we have to remember composite parts are produced by using a combination of materials. So we need a reinforcement in there to get those strength properties that we need. Now, resin on its own is a very brittle material. The three normal types of resins we use are polyester, vinyl ester, and epoxy resin. Now these all have different advantages and disadvantages when it comes to producing composite parts. The reason why we can't use them on their own, as I said, is mostly because they're brittle. And also because this resin, or matrix as it's referred to, is what protects the fibres and what transfers the load between them. So essentially if we just use resin on its own, we just have uh, a sheet of plastic which could easily be snapped. Now if you were to put this in an aviation setting as well, not only would there be the chance of it being brittle, but it would also have uh, the properties to either melt or degrade over time, especially with UV degradation. Now, I'll talk a little bit briefly about the different types of matrix that we can use, polyester, vinyl ester, and epoxy. So polyester is the cheapest sort of resin that we can get, but it's also the weakest, and it's also very... Uh, weak against UV light, which means that over time it will break down very, very quickly. Vinyl ester is seen as a mid-between. Uh, it's more expensive, but it has really good UV light um, defensive properties, which means that it won't become brittle. Epoxy, as you probably heard before, is used for glue as well, and this is why it's a very, very tough resin, but very expensive at about two and a half times the price of polyester. 
So another example of an everyday common composite item is actually a surfboard. Now, down in the southwest, surfing is one of the major sports. And in regards to surfboards, they actually have a foam core middle, which may, gives them buoyancy and makes them really light. However, the outer skin, as we can see, is made with fiberglass and joco on top. And that's what gives it the water resistant properties that we need. So transportation makes up roughly 14% of the UK's composite market. So in front of me here are two examples of car panels made from composite technologies. Now, composite car panels are much, much lighter than traditional materials. Uh, in the early 2000s, we started to use composite materials instead of everyday uh, materials such as steel, which were really heavy. And this is really important when we look at fuel economy um, and fuel efficiency as well, because with new environmental legislation coming on, um, cars need to only get lighter and lighter to make them more efficient. Now these panels probably weigh about a third of the weight of a steel panel and these are used in most types of automotive uh, industry now. So composite parts are found in day-to-day -day life everywhere, from phone cases to microwave casing to fridge doors. There's plenty in, uh, in your house and with household goods as well. Now uh, it's a common misconception that composite parts are used in special applications only, such as the marine industry or aerospace. Well, the marine industry only makes up about 3% of the UK's composite market, which is barely anything compared to the 16% that's used to make electrical goods, um, transportation, which is 14%, or even pipes, which again is at 16%. Now, phone cases such as this uh, is another um, common example of where composite parts are used. By using composites, we can make them nice and light, but they can also absorb impact from when we accidentally drop them, and that's just what we need if we're going to protect our phones. So I'm now gonna to demonstrate to um, all of you how to do a flat panel, a very simple two layers of fiberglass and resin flat panel as such, using one of the wet layup techniques. The first thing we have to do is with our board, we have to tape um, all of the surrounding area so we give ourselves a border. Once we have this area in the middle that we're gonna make the panel with, uh, we're going to use wax, as our release agent. This is gonna mean that the actual resin won't stick to the board. Instead, it's gonna form a release layer so that when we pop it off, it will come easily off like this flat panel here. The first step is we have to take the lid off the wax. Now in most of the waxes, you will find a cloth inside. And this is gonna be filled with most of the wax already. It's important when we apply wax that we do it in a circular motion. And this is so that we can overlap each of the spirals and so that we can get into all of the small little cuts or scratches that might be on the board. So applying, you do it in lots of very small little circles. You want to do this all the way around the board and make sure you can cover everything between the tape marks. If you're ever not sure on what area you've waxed, just use the light to help you. Get down low on a level with it and take a look over the surface. You should be able to see a matte appearance where you've applied the wax and um, your normal finish of the surface where you haven't. Just keep on going. Much like waxing a car or polishing, uh, we always want to go in a circular um, rotation uh, motion whenever we apply anything. This is just going to ensure even coverage. So applying wax on complex molds, we normally want to apply between three and four layers. On something basic like this, we can get away with one layer. You might want to do two if it hasn't been used in a while. And that's just going to guarantee then that once we're done with our panel, we can pick it up and it will release properly. Now that we've applied our wax, we want to make sure that we leave it for about 20 minutes. Um, some manufacturers will stay 30 to 40 minutes. Uh, 20 minutes is plenty of time for that wax to soak in. Once we do, once it's soaked in, we then use a clean merino wipe or uh, a wipe of some kind, could be a microfiber cloth, and gently just take the wax back off. So to laminate our flat panel, we're going to use a polyester resin. We could either use a polyester, vinyl ester, or epoxy resin. 
Now polyester resin is the cheapest of the free resins, um, but it's also the weakest. Uh, however, it's the easiest to work with, and it's for those reasons that we're going to be using it today. So, polyester resin is typically uh, a light blue colour when you pour it out. And to do our panel, we're going to need probably about 400 millilitres because we're doing two layers. So, before we start to use all of our resin and start laminating, we need to make sure that we have all of the necessary equipment for the actual process before we add the catalyst. As soon as we add the catalyst, we only have about 15 to 20 minutes to work with this resin before it starts to go gloopy and we can't use it anymore. So it's important that before we add the catalyst, we make sure everything is correct and working. So we need our fiberglass. I've cut out two sheets of 300 gram uh, chop strand mat here, and I know that these fit perfectly on top of my mold. Our rollers, we need to check and make sure that they can spin okay, and this is important uh, when it comes to the actual consolidation process, which I'll get onto in a little bit. The last one is to check that your fluffy roller um, spins as well. Okay? If it doesn't, then you're just going to end up dragging the actual fiberglass rather than putting the resin evenly over the top of it. Now, catalyst is the most dangerous thing that we work with here. It's highly corrosive and it's very much an irritant as well. So if that gets on your skin, it's not going to be very good. And it's for that reason that we need to make sure that we wear PPE, all of the relevant PPE that we have to. So that includes goggles, blue nitrile gloves, or in some cases, black marigolds, and also a white oval as well. Now, we add catalyst at 2% uh, to the amount of resin that we have. Here I've pulled out 400 millilitres of resin. So those at home who are good at maths can probably work out how much I'm going to add already, which is 8 millilitres of catalyst. So, holding it out from a distance, you want to push it and fill it up until it goes up to 8 millilitres. like that. We now have roughly about 8 millilitres of catalyst. Before mixing, you want to make sure that your mixing stick gets covered in the resin. This is going to ensure an even distribution and even mixing of the actual catalyst itself. Once ready, pour that in and start mixing. Now, Polyester resin is normally a purple or light blue colour whenever we use it. And this is essentially because it's a plastic. As soon as we mix in catalyst, you should start to notice a change uh, between the colour. And it should start to go a much, much darker colour. And this will start to go dark brown, and then followed by a dark green. So. Next, we want to bring our pot as close to the mould as we actually can. This is to prevent resin going absolutely everywhere. Uh, and as you'll soon learn to realise if you're working with composites, resins and gel coats go everywhere. They spatter uh, on everything you don't want it to go. Okay? So, next step is to merge your roller inside the actual pot. There is no neat technique to doing this. You just want to put it on quite thick. should have a nice even coverage of resin, like so. Now, once you have enough resin on the actual board itself, you want to pick up one of your pieces of fiberglass, line it up, and gently just put it down. Now, you can use your gloves to just push it down and make sure it's not going to go anywhere. That resin isn't going to come up through, not yet anyway, and that means they won't go all over your hands for the moment. The next step is to grab a little bit extra resin and just coat it once again. Now 
Now, as we can see, the colour of the fibreglass has already changed. It's become more like the resin. That's all of that resin soaking in. And as we can see, once we put the resin on, it's already starting to go a dark green colour. So once we have our fibreglass and resin on, uh, the next thing we need to do is consolidate. And that's essentially pushing all of the air out between the layers. So we have two different types of rollers. We have the pencil roller and we have a paddle roller. Now the only difference between the two is that with the pencil roller, the ribs go vertically. And with the paddle roller, the ribs go horizontally. Now if you need to remember it, just think about a paddle boat and then that's how you can remember the paddle roller, okay? Now, pencil rollers are only used for one layer of fiberglass and to get into corners, whereas the paddle roller is used for two or more layers at a time. So, because we've only got one layer, we're going to use the pencil roller. Now you want to work from the middle of the actual panel out and squeeze all of that air out as best as we can. Now it's important when we come to consolidate that we don't push down too hard. If we push down too hard with the actual consolidation roller, we're going to rip and tear the fiberglass, which we can't have happen. Okay. Now that we've got one layer on, that's perfect. We're, we know that we have good bonding to um, Joko if it's there, or to the wax that's over that mould. So next we've got two layers, so we need to do exactly the same again. But this time when we consolidate, we need to use the paddle roller. So, we put some more resin on. Now when it comes to using this roller for the second time, make sure you don't push down too hard. The main reason is that else you're going to move all of that fiberglass uh, that you've worked really hard to try and squish all the air out of. So again, if you look at the light, you should see quite a thick coating of resin. That's when we know that we have enough on top. We got a second layer of fiberglass and just put it on top. As soon as we're happy with the layout of it, we then just push down gently again. The resin won't come up through the actual fiberglass yet, so it's not going to go all over our gloves. Now it's a good idea whenever you do this to wear multiple layers of blue nitrile gloves in case if you do, because then you can just shed one layer off and you have a clean pair underneath. Grab some more resin, just like the previous layer, and provide an even coverage of resin over the top. Now don't focus too much on putting a really thick layer on because when we consolidate and push all that air out, we're also going to bring up all of the resin from the previous layer up onto the top surface as well. And that's why laminating is so strong, because we're using the resin from previous layers to create a really, really strong bond between the fiberglass. So, now that we've put enough resin on top of our final layer, because we're using two layers or more, we're going to be using the paddle roller. So the paddle ro roller, remember, is the one with the horizontal ribs, and these are really, really good for condensing two or more layers together. You want to start from the middle. You want to apply finger pressure, push down.
Now remember, when we come to use our consolidation rollers, we don't just have to go up and down in one direction. We can go side to side horizontally. We can go at 45 degrees. It doesn't matter. The one thing you don't want to see, however, is any white patches left over from areas where there isn't enough resin, and you can still see that fiberglass appearance. And that's it. That is how you do laminating on a wet layup for a panel. After that's been done, all you have to do is clean all of your tools and equipment, clean the area, and wait for this to cure. A full cure should take 24 hours. I hope you found this short video really interesting. If you have, we have a wide selection of free workshops and courses covering a wide range of GRP and composite courses. To find out more, inquire or apply by following the link in the description or go to South Devon College, Smart Skills, Composites.